uh, vehicles, a freight train and an express train. In the problem, we were given the distances directly. The freight train went 100 miles, the express 150 miles. Now for the weights, it just told us that the express goes 20 miles per hour faster than the freight. So if we let R stand for the rate of the freight, then R plus 20 stands for the rate of the express train. The times were, were equal to one another because the problem said in the same time. So uh, we'll just put a little equal sign in this position and that really kickstarts our concept for a solution. That the time traveled by the freight is equal to the time traveled by the express. Now we know that time can be expressed or written in terms of distance and rate. That is time is simply distance over rate. So we're going to replace the time on each side of our equation with distance over rate. And now all we need to do is fill in information in this little format and we'll have an equation for a solution. Now the distances are given directly in our chart above, so we'll replace the D on the left side of the equation with the distance for the freight, and that of course would be 100. And the D on the right side is the distance traveled by the express, and that's 150. Now on the left side, the rate for the freight is simply R, so there's no replacement. In the denominator on the right side, we'll replace R with R plus 20. Now to solve the equation, we notice that we have a, a single a fraction on the left side, single fraction on the right side, and there are really two approaches that could be used. But here we'll just identify a common denominator and multiply on both sides by that common denominator. The common denominator is r times r plus 20, and we're just showing that uh, that common denominator is multiplied on both sides, and we're looking for cancellation opportunities. On the left, the r's cancel, leaving 100 times r plus 20, or 100R plus 2,000. On the right, R plus 20 uh, cancels with the other R plus 20. We have R times 150, or 150R. Now to continue the solution, we subtract 100R on both sides, and on the right we collect to get 50R. Then we'll divide on both sides by that coefficient of R, dividing by 50. We get to the nice cancellation on the right, and we find on the left we have 40. So 40 is equal to R, and we're ready to write our solution solutions. The rate of the freight train is 40 miles per hour, and since the express goes 20 miles an hour faster, the rate of the express train is 60 miles per hour. As we read through this problem, look for a statement of equality somewhere. A small plane has a speed of 170 miles per hour in still air. Find the speed of the wind if the plane travels a distance of 400 miles with a tailwind in the same time it takes to travel 280 miles into a headwind. Now you may notice that, that in the same time at the bottom of the, of the problem is what I was talking about. This is going to become the basis of our overall equation for a solution. Now although there are a number of correct ways to approach the outline of a problem like this, one way to, to start to build an equation is to outline the information that we find in all those words. Now here's what we find uh, important in the problem at hand. 170 miles per hour is the speed of the plane in still air. We're looking for the wind speed. And we're told that the plane can travel 400 miles with the wind in the same time as it travels 280 miles into the wind, that is against the wind. So although we have one vehicle, we have two directions of travel. We're traveling with the wind, we're traveling against the wind. Now the wind speed is what we're looking for here. And we're, we're going to let X stand for the speed of the wind. But to represent the rate of the airplane, we have to think about how fast the plane can go with the wind and how fast it can go against the wind. Since the wind is helping the, the, the airplane travel faster when it's going with the wind, the rate going with the wind is 170 plus X, 170 plus the wind speed. And going against the wind, the wind is working against the airplane, so the speed of the airplane would be 170 miles an hour minus X. 
Now the distances are given with the wind is 400 miles and against the wind is 280 miles. And that business about in the same time just means that the two times are equal to one another in this uh, relationship. Now that equality of time becomes our basic concept for a solution. The time going with the wind is equal to the time going against the wind. And we know from experience that time can be represented as distance divided by rate. And all we need to do at this point is fill in information from our table. Now, for the left side, the, uh, that's the information about traveling with the wind. The distance is 400 miles, and the rate is 170 plus x. So now we have a fraction for the left side. On the right side, it's 280 over 170 minus x. And now we simply need to solve this equation. Now there are a couple of ways of approaching the solution of an equation like this with one fraction on one side and one on the other side. But one way is to cross multiply. And when we cross multiply in this direction, we get 4... 47,600 plus 280x. Cross multiplying the other way, that would be 400 times 170 minus x, we'd get 68,000 minus 400x. Well, at this point, we want to put our constants on one side and our, our variables on the other side. If we add 400x on both sides, then we can think of uh, the minus 400x moving to the other side of the equation and becoming plus 400x. We subtract 47,600 on both sides and we get minus 47,600 on the right. Well, collecting on the left, we get 680x and collecting on the right, 20,400. Now we'll divide on both sides by the coefficient of x. That's dividing by 680. We get a nice cancellation on the left side as expected. But on the right, when we divide, we get 30. And that's the answer in our problem. Remember, x stood for the speed of the wind. So the speed of the wind then is 30 miles per hour. And we simply write our answer as a complete sentence. Here's a mixture problem. 50 gallons of 70% acid solution are obtained by mixing an 80% solution with a 50% solution. How many gallons of each solution must be used to obtain the desired mixture? Now it turns out that in building our mathematical model, our equation for solution here, all we need to do is imagine the mixing process of these two liquids. Imagine having two beakers with uh, one with 80% uh, acid solution and one with 50% acid solution, and those two solutions are poured into a third beaker. Well, that's what's going on here, and that's what we want to imagine to build our, our equation. Now, the result of the mixture is 50 gallons of 70% acid solution. So set this idea up in terms of an equation, and we're beginning to build, then, our mathematical model for solution. Let's let X stand for the number of gallons in the first beaker, and to represent the number of gallons or the quantity in the second beaker, we think, well, gee, we have 50 total gallons, and if X gallons are in the first beaker, then we represent the number of gallons in the second beaker as 50 minus x, the total minus the number of gallons in the first beaker. Now remember that uh, we have different amounts of acid in the, the two different uh, containers being mixed, and we need to list those here. The first one contained 80% acid, and the second one contained 50% acid. The general idea in putting together the equation is that we're multiplying gallons times percent uh, for each of these beakers. So it's gallons times percent plus gallons times percent equals total gallons times resulting percent. Actually, what we're calculating here is acid plus acid equals total acid, but we don't really think about it like that. We just say, think about gallons times percent. And now we just put some, some actual numbers in place of, of these uh, general ideas. And so it's x number of gallons times 80 percent, or 80 hundredths, and then 50 minus x number of gallons times 50 percent, or 50 hundredths, and then 50 gallons times 70 percent acid, or 70 hundredths.
One technique to take care of the decimals here is to multiply through by 100. That is, multiply each term by 100, and then all of those decimals slide two places to the right. It just uh, eliminates uh, the need for us to have decimals in the problem. So we have x times 80 plus 50 minus x times 50 and so on. Now, multiplying, uh, we just expand here and, and collect and solve as we normally would. So we have x times 80 is 80x, 50 minus x is 2,500 minus 50x, and on the right, 3,500. Collecting on the left, we get uh, 30x, and subtracting 2,500 on both sides gives us 1,000 on the right. Dividing on both sides by 30, we find x to be 33.3. .3. But uh, 